Hello everyone, it's Nikki Backerl D'Angelo here for another State of the Game. Today I have an announcement to make. A 26 year relationship that I had that went way back to 1991, of course that's 26 years, has suddenly come to a crossroads. This relationship was built back in the days when gaming was just taking off. When a single title created a craze of upgrading and I moved from the Commodore Amiga platform over to the PC attending a computer show with my father-in-law leaving that computer show with my first motherboard and processor and other parts of course to make my computer I can't remember which motherboard it was because God knows what the names were back then, but I remember the processor today. I could have gotten an Intel 386. There was no reason why I couldn't. I could have bought a, I could have purchased a Cyrix, but I bought a 40 megahertz AM 386DX40. Of course, that's what the 40 stands for from AMD. And since that day to today, I have been an AMD supporter, a loyalist. Yes, I know, second rate, never the best, but always the cheapest. So let me take you forward 26 years to what happened last weekend. I was streaming or playing with a couple of friends of mine and uh, left them because I was having some issues with my computer. I didn't let them know. I just left them and went to go fix them. I went back online and I was in a chat room and I made a mention of, oh my God, all I want to do is play Star Citizen and my computer just runs like shit. All right, so my computer runs like shit. That's an easy one, right? Just tune it, make it better. Well, I'm getting like 20 something frames per second, I tell them. And, uh, you know, every time I really do try to push a little bit out of this computer, it just overheats a little bit. I'm running a AMD 9370 Vachera. And they said, oh, okay. Well, we really want you to keep doing your shows. So one of them said, you know what? I'm going to make you a donation. And like within 30 seconds, money showed up in my PayPal account. And then one of the other people that I was talking to, money showed up my PayPal again, account again. So I had money to purchase a motherboard and processor. So I'm faced with this dilemma. I'm watching all the news about the Ryzen come out. I really wanted to get the Ryzen. I thought it was going to be wonderful. And I figured what they were giving me was just enough to buy the motherboard and processor based on what the prices were at the time. Uh, $500 for the uh, 1800X and about $300, I think, or $350 for the Crosshair motherboard. So it was going to be like $850 plus RAM. It's going to be 1000 bucks for everything. All right, so then the benchmarks start coming out. And, you know, at first I looked at them. They didn't seem too good. And then I looked at the gaming performance, and it seemed, um, I mean, they, at first they looked great. Then I saw the gaming performance. I was a little bit disappointed. And I saw the 1080p gaming performance and the 4K performance, and, the two, and I didn't understand the differences. Why were they so close at 4K and not that close at 1080p? Lo and behold, I get the answer, and it has to do with something called GPU bottleneck. Well, the reason why you do the test at 1080p is because at 4K, everything is even because the CPUs themselves aren't the deciding factor in pushing the graphics. The graphics cards are. While at 1080p, the graphics cards are pushing every ounce out that they can. They've pretty much maximized all settings on Ultra for the two processors. So the only thing that could actually change the frame rate was the processor themselves. And under this configuration, the Ryzen was scoring about 10% less. So 10% less for $200 more. I think it was $299 versus $499. And $150 more for the motherboard. That was not going to work for me. Usually AMD had the best price per um, horsepower. You know, best bang for the buck. But in this situation, they didn't because they haven't released the 1600X, which is their gaming processor yet. 
and there haven't been optimizations to really show off what the Ryzen's going to be able to do in the future. So for me, getting a brand new processor this week, I had to get an Intel. So I wound up getting a 7700K, the Asus Maximus 9 Hero motherboard, 16 gigs of Dominator RAM, that's PC3200, and because I saved that much money on it, I was able to get a Samsung, not a 950, but a 960 Pro 512 gig hard drive and moved over a 850 from my old computer along with the power supply. And I bought a new cooler, a Corsair um, H100i V2 and wound up buying a brand new case because I want to build a Ryzen unit, uh, um, Ryzen system in my old unit at some point in the future. So the case I got was amazing. It is a glass case, tempered glass, made by Corsair. It's called the Corsair Crystal Series 460X. It is a pain in the butt to cable manage in it, but when you're done, all the time you spent managing those cables pays off with the most beautiful system, and I'll try to put a picture up over here, that I have ever made. So I'm an Intel person for the first time in 26 years. Oh my God. So that's one thing that's changed. Second thing, if you remember three or four years ago, I got the X55 when it came out and now it's four years later. I loved it when it came out, but I've had a love-hate relationship with this piece of plastic crap for the past three years. Let's say three years. Thumb button broken, trigger broken, pinky um, toggle on the throttle broken, throttle drift and rotation um, yaw and uh, roll drift on the stick then lots of drift on the analog stick on the uh, thumb well thumb analog stick on the throttle too many problems to talk about um, broken wires inside multiple times I had to take it apart and resolder a couple of wires together just the worst build quality I've ever seen so I'm at my wits end I want to play Star Citizen I want to have some fun and somebody turned me on to the two joystick um, control system. Actually, it was Sophie Girl and Felicia ATL, uh, FTL. And I went looking for these Thrustmaster joysticks that would work with it, which are the 16,000s. Well, lo and behold, they got updated this year. And I am going to be the proud owner of a much less expensive, but much better HOTA system tomorrow. So look for an unboxing and look for a video to talk about how I like this stick and throttle over the X55. I know that Twerk already did a video on this. We're going to get my opinion, see if it meshes with his. Um, I'll try to put his info in the bottom of this video in the comment section too. So I do have something special for you. It's going to be an audio interview with Sandy. Let me just set it up this way. Um, Sandy tried to do this from her house and we couldn't get her computer working. Um, she rushed into the office for me. Uh, 25 minutes later, she contacts me. She's in the front conference room, and audio is kind of horrible in this. We didn't get good video because she was using the uh, video in that room, and it just didn't come out right. There was no matching up of the um, sound with the video, so we're just going to do an audio interview. Sandy's wonderful. I love her. She's always willing to do these videos with me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, about halfway through Sandy's video, you're going to see a switch over from my new computer to video I shot with my old computer just to give you an idea of what the differences are. And I'll come back at the end of this interview and close out my show. Thank you. And here is my interview with Sandy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another, well, I, I'll call this an episode, but this is just one of our candid chats where Sandy sits down with me and we get to ask her some questions. Hi, Sandy. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Well, I'm not doing too bad. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment, but I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's been a while since we talked, and there's been a lot going on with the production of the game. Uh some people would like to know, does CIG have any update on like what might be going on with Logitech and their um, coming on board with making the joystick for uh, you guys? I actually haven't heard anything about that. 
It's kind of tough because they have their own issues going on with Mad Cats, it seems. Yeah, so it's kind of a bummer. I really don't know. We, have, we don't have any updates. So. And it is something that might work itself out over the next few months, I hope. I hope. Have, yeah. Have you thought about any other suppliers or any other makers of products, Razor or anyone else? I mean, the thing with the joystick is, like, the tech costs so much money to, like, tool up. So, because Razor hasn't done it before, it would cost them so much money to, you know, tool up the tech, whereas Logitech already has that tech. Okay. And obviously, for those of you that haven't been around a while, it was originally Saytech, and Saytech was purchased outright by Logitech last year. I think it was September, right? Yeah, somewhere around there last year. And before that, it was just prototype stages that you guys were saying yay or nay to. Yeah, I mean, it was the design and the prototype had come along really great, but, you know, just how, okay. how, how are the boxes coming along, the uh, physical packages that people have purchased in the back, past? Yeah, I'm doing a final um, pass on the silver collector's boxes with all of the like legalese and the trademarking and all that stuff. So that should come in like hopefully this month, and then that that means it's good to go into production. There's like thousands of silver boxes. So, so have you already approved the little six inch and three inch and two inch models? Yeah, that's all been approved. Um, but then there's just the timing of, you know, which one do you make first? Because some have six month lead time, some have four months, some have nine months. So you have to like juggle all the pieces and have them all kind of. How has that worked with um, so many of the ships changing over the past? Well, we're sticking with the, um, the Mark II, I think, for the Constellation, <coughs> you know, the one that we did the 10-inch model from? Yeah. The yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll have that for um, those boxes. I'm pointing to something nobody <laughs> knew. You know, yes. Yeah. Um, are, are you, I know that this is hard work, and I don't think people know what goes into planning these things out, but was the original model sale of the Constellation successful enough to revisit that down the line with other ships? Yeah, it was successful in terms of sales. It was like a complete nightmare in terms of trying to get the detail. Like so many factories turned us down, um, probably for the best, because they couldn't do the kind of quality, like detail of all the little bits um, and the painting and everything. So. There was only two companies that would do it. And then you have to go back and forth and back and forth on all of the detail. We've been trying to do it for uh, a couple of the other ships, and that's like, all right. Does, does Chris ever weigh in on those items, or does he leave that totally in the hands of um, Yeah, the constellation I went to Chris Smith for, so I worked with him a lot, and then on the final pass, when the sample came in, then I went to the other Chris, my Chris. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So the original Chris, was that Chris Smith? Uh, Smith? Chris Smith, yeah. Chris Smith, awesome. Yeah. I love that man. Great yeah, chassis yeah. design. He's here at the moment, actually. Um, him and Josh Coons are here at LA. I just saw him. I went to go, he went to come hug me, but I was like, no, no, I'm not well, don't hug me. <laughs> this one. Uh, did Chris bring something back from Manchester? Or have you been working yourself to to death? And yeah, something? I think that basically happens. You know, you work a lot, and then there's so many people in the office that just need one. And then, like Dennis isn't here today. Okay. He's sick, so who knows? Okay. Well, so far, I would say that Star Marine seems to be off to a good start, and in the beginning of our conversations three and a half, almost four years ago, we spoke a little bit about potentially having some kind of a eSports tie-in. 
Are you still looking at that? Yeah, we've had a lot of people um, inquire about the esports, and it's kind of been something that's been on the back burner. <laughs> we almost got it up a couple of times. I think my main thing, you know, on the marketing front and kind of the engagement front is anything that, that is taking away from dev time or taking away their focus from getting 3.0 out or um, 42 completed. I just am not bothering them with because I just don't want to distract them. That makes sense. I know that I, I, I ask some of these questions and I know what the answers are. It's like, let's get the game out before we start thinking about those pieces of it. But then you start to read between the lines and those lines that I'm seeing are on the description pages for Lumberyard on how much of Twitch is integrated, which Amazon owns Twitch, Amazon owns Lumberyard. How much of it is it weaved through it? When the team made Lumberyard, the Lumberyard decision, did anybody from the team look at how that would affect things like esports and like streamers and how that would make the game more fun and much more marketable down the road? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we did look at it. I mean, primarily it was just, um, you know, we, we were predominantly unaffected by the switch to Lumberyard. I mean, it really didn't affect us in any way. Um, it didn't. It didn't affect the development where you guys were at, but it actually opens up a lot of avenues. No, it definitely does. It definitely, um, for sure, in terms of like live streaming, live broadcasting. Um, you know, that going forward, yeah, it would definitely be. I mean, there's other shows like you know we talked about um, the next great star marine or the next great starship. Those things uh, using lumberyard will be like more accessible competitions, I think, too. Are those things back in a thinking stage, like bringing them back out? Next great Star Marine, next great... Well, um, we yeah, I mean, it's basically in the same category as, like, eSports and <laughs> everything else that, that requires any dev time, you know, I can't take away from Chris's time or Aaron's time or any of the leads, you know, Sean Tracy. So. I know that even though those answers are kind of, no, it's not going to happen, there's going to be many people that are going to be excited to hear you say that because developing the game and getting it out is a very, very, very important um, goal of everyone on the team right now. Or, or do you see a increased um, increased desire or attention to getting the game moving again on a on a faster schedule? Uh, I feel like this year is um, the best year I've seen from our team in terms of like I think you know it's uh, pretty difficult while you're in it you don't really know what the challenges are but once you've got a you know we're in our fourth fifth year. And um, the team are really starting to gel better. You know, you have to kind of, you've got to build it up. You've got to find the right people. You've got to, like, get your offices. There's so many things that you're kind of not thinking about, you know, while you're in it. But then after the fact, I mean, I feel like this year, like, the energy in our office is really nice. People are really focused. They know what their tasks are. They're keen to, like, um, get the game out and... Um, I think that the teams also have a better understanding of where they fit in terms of the other kind of, you know, it was more difficult in the beginning. You got to kind of got to feel out how does Austin fit into my team and how does UK fit into my team and how does Germany fit into my team and how, to, how does it all work? And I feel like this year is the best year I've seen yet um, for people kind of understanding what they're way that I fit in the global team. Has, has your team grown at all in the past year? My team has grown a bit, yes. Um, and it's funny because I'm not sure our team growing makes us better. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing to say or not a nice thing to say. Um, it's hard in our team because it's so uh, involved 
um, in terms of knowing knowing a lot of the history. So kind of bringing on new folks in marketing, it's like explaining to them the fans don't really like that. Yes, the fans like this. It's, it's very steep learning curve. So we do have, you know, we're probably have increased by like 30%. Um, Oh, wow. mainly in LA. But we have that we have Cameron in the UK. He solely manages all the events. You know, before it was just me, right? It was so, I mean, complete. Right. I mean, I don't even know how I did that. Every time I talked to you in the past, you were coming and going from one meeting to another or on the phone right before we were set to speak, talking to somebody about setting up booths in Germany or you know, what food you're going to have in Austin for something. I think that was the, not Austin, San Antonio. Yeah, I mean, it's like too yeah. much. I smell that customer service is yeah. uh, the UK and Austin basically have taken over customer service. I mean, I do, um, I still deal with Alexis quite closely because we have the subscriber stuff and the merchandise stuff, so. Yeah. So Alexis is the one that would answer most of the merchandising questions. I yeah, guess. I mean, I definitely she runs everything through me. Um, but we, we, you know, we have like five staples that we're going to put out. I think, <laughs> excuse me, like next month. Um, like. What What would those staples be? They would be things that would be on. Yeah, the like a basic Star Citizen T-shirt, basic Squadron Four Two T-shirt, cap. Cat for both brands, and then a Terra mouse pack. So that'd be the five things. Awesome. And you know, people are always looking for the cosplay kit because there's so many of these events where they could show their support for Star Citizen, and they want to go there looking the part. They're not looking for you to give them high-end costumes. What they are looking for is guides to tell them what they look like, patches, hats you know, things that matter. So you had mentioned something about a cosplay kit in one of our interviews. And it seems to come up in every subsequent interview. Have you guys touched on cosplay kits in recent months? Um, I guess it's, it's, we, it's on the list. I guess it's deciphering how best to do that. Like what, what things would people most want in that kit? So, like, do you want, um, I'm, I'm done in, like, give me one second. Uh, are you, do you have a meeting here right now? Yeah, I think we have the ship thingy. Okay, I'll be out of here in okay. a couple of minutes, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be out in yeah. less than um, uh, Yeah, is that giving them maybe the design for, like, two or three, like the UAE, the Navy, a Marine, or something like that, and then providing the patches, um, like, you know, providing the fabric, you know, what, what kind of, what would actually be in there. And it's definitely doable because obviously people are all different shapes and sizes and female and male and all of this kind of stuff. So. Okay. There's been a, um, there's been an, a request for some sort of merchandising uh, based on the Van Duel theme, or Xi'an or Bonnie, but a lot of people uh -huh. say Van Duel. Is it something that you've touched on, you know, thinking about what would you sell that would give somebody a certain affinity towards the Van Duel? Mm. I don't know why people... They're very scary looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, who's doing it? Not Jeremiah. But uh, I just showed somebody the Van Duel the other day. They were like, oh my God. It's pretty... Yeah. They look pretty cool. I don't know, what would we do? Outside of like green, I mean maybe like a cool, cool like slogan or something that was on like mugs or no. Um, I, I, if you ask what would we do, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get an influx of things that I could send to you. But you know, people would be first and foremost would say, sell us a Van Duel model. But I could see T-shirts that were, you know, brownish or grayish and had Van Duel on it and. Support. And I'm thinking about Van Duel Veronica, one of the people. I think you met her at um, Citizen Con. She was the only Van Duel sympathizer. Uh, yeah, I, I think the Van Duel figurine would be pretty simple to do. I might talk to Dave about it because, like, a slogan could be cool. You know, whatever. How, like, they, you know, there's all these cool Star Wars t shirts for Darth Vader, like, different slogans or whatever. 
and they're just fun. Yeah. Um, All right. So can you give us a quick, before you go, a quick rundown of like events that might be coming up that CIG is going to be participating in? Um, that's a really good question. What are we now? February, mid-February. Um, I'm not actually the person to ask for the more smaller events. It's probably Tyler and um, Cameron. All right. You know what smaller events that we have coming up before I basically, you know, I will oversee like Gamescom and uh, <coughs> Citizen Con. Gamescom will be the same venue as we had last year, which actually turned out really well. It wasn't too big, wasn't too small. Nobody like was freaking out from heat exhaustion or whatever like we had at the AWARC. That wasn't so, so much fun. Um, yeah, but the smaller events I don't oversee. I don't know about Dragon Con. I'll have to ask Ben if we're going to. I think we got denied last year, so I don't know. Oh, and on. you got denied for the larger room. Right. I think. So. That first room was too small for who showed up, and if you did that again, it would be a bigger disappointment. That will just grow right. each year. So, so, I mean, if it's Dragon Con, it will probably be more of an impromptu thing uh -huh. this year. All right. I thought so, and hopefully you do get to make it. Are you ever going to bring? Well, that's that's personal. I always think about like how David um, Ladyman brings his son, so I always expect to see you with your girls or something at an event. Yeah, I took him to uh, PAX Australia. They went to um, a couple of parties, and the younger one was a little bit scared. I mean, they were, you know, and there was a lot of cosplay of people in like armor, carrying weapons and stuff. So they kind of. Oh. Awesome. Well, I know that you are on a tight schedule, and I appreciate you working through the audio <laughs> today and finding a place where we can actually talk. And I look forward to speaking sure. to you again. Anytime. Thanks, guys. See you later. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. 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 I'm going to be back next week, talk a little bit about the uh, X55 versus the T16000M FCS, see how that works out for me. And if you want to weigh in on the Ryzen versus Intel issue, you can do so below. Now, just to give you an idea, I am on a schedule for now on doing my videos. I'm going to be doing at least one state of the game, at least one Wednesday, or talk with other developers. I have Chris Smith on deck. I'm trying to get to Jeremiah Lee. And of course, Brian said he would come back on anytime I sent him a heads up about coming back on the show. So that's where we're at. I am also going to be doing other videos on my show again with Elite Dangerous moving into the Horizon Commanders release very shortly. I'm going to start showcasing that also. And then I'm going to do something horrible. I'm going to play the worst game in the world and only because I'm a masochist and want to show how great we have it and how bad it could be. I'm going to play No Man's Sky a little bit on my channel. You don't have to watch it. I'm going to be doing it primarily just to see how bad it actually is. I will discuss why I have that game on those videos. But here on Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, you will get the best information that I have to bring you, and wonderful interviews with the developers. Well, folks, that's all I've got for you. And I am so thankful that you still continue to watch, listen, comment, and support the show. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.